Task Factory is a suite of SSIS components available from Pragmatic Works. In this video, we'll take a look at the XML destination. XML has become the standard for exchanging data across the Internet. As such, it would be nice to have a destination component that made it easy to output XML. Fortunately, Task Factory has just such a component. Here, I've set up my OADB data source to pull data from the AdventureWorks 2008R2 data warehouse and we're going to pull it from the DIM employee table. And there's all the columns. So now that we have that set up, all we need to do is grab an XML destination and drop it on the control surface. And we'll connect to it. And we'll just take a second to make them look nice. There we go. And let's open it up. And there we go. Now the first thing we have to do is select our file connection. So here I'm going to hit the drop down and we're going to create a new file connection. And we're going to pick the create file usage type. I'm going to paste it in. I've got an output directory set up and I'm going to call the file XML output. And I'm going to click OK. Now that's great if I always want to call the file XML output, but I can also override the contents of that with a variable. So I've got a variable set up named XML file, and I'm going to pick that. That actually has a file name in it with the same path, but the XML file.xml as my file name. And of course, you would actually be able to dynamically access that during your application's run. At the bottom, I can select what columns to include or exclude. So I can come here and include them all. And then maybe I don't care what the parent employee key is. Maybe I don't want to include the national ID or the parent national ID. I can also rearrange the columns. For example, here I could take the last name, come over here, and move it up. To the very top, I could do the same with the first name. And we'll move it up. There we go. Now, over on the Advanced tab, I can select different formatting options. For example, for the root element name, I could put employees. And for each individual element, I'll call it employee. I can also come down here and add a few other options, such as adding a new line after each row. I can tell it to output my header. I can also tell it to add a new line after each attribute. In order to get that to work, I also have to check on indent elements. So let's come over here and take a preview of what our output would look like. And there we go, and it just uses test or 100 for any numeric values, but it gives us an idea of what our output's going to look like. So we'll just click OK. And then we'll actually run this. And it output 296 rows. And we can open it up right here from within Visual Studio. So we'll just do File, Open, uh, File. And there we go. Here's our File Open dialog. And you can see, even though I had put XML output for the file name in the Connection Manager, it correctly took the name for the variable and called XML File. So we'll just double click on that to open it. And here we go. Here's our XML output. It's nicely formatted. All the information we could ever want. And that was it. That's all that took to create an XML file from a particular data source. Quick and easy, painless. To learn more about the XML destination or any of the other Task Factory components, please visit us at pragmaticworks.com.